Welcome to part one of my series on Airtable. And if you're a social media manager, definitely stay tuned to this entire five-part series because it will completely streamline the way you organize your client information. Now, I started using Airtable about two years ago when my friend Lainey Lamar launched her course, Airtable Like a Boss. And like I said, it's changed the way that I've approached uh, organizing my client's information. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing how to organize the onboarding information. So we're talking things like the client's target market, their branding, and their overall uh, strategy and goals and how to put that all in one place that's easy to reference. Now, for those of you who are new to my channel, hello, my name is Andrea Jones. I'm a social media strategist, and I'm all about helping make things easy and simple and fun for you, especially for my fellow social media managers out there. It can be tough. It's a it's an ever evolving world and I want to help streamline that for you. Now, if you're a social media manager and you're looking for more business building tools, I highly recommend downloading the business building blueprint for social media managers. You can find it by going to onlinedrea.com slash blueprint, and that will give you some shifts that you can make in your business today that will really help elevate the work that you're doing. All right, enough talking. Let's dive into this tutorial on Airtable. All right, guys. So I'm sharing my screen and showing you what the inside of my Airtable base looks like. And we're starting right now in the client overview. Make sure you're subscribed because in various parts of this series, we'll go over some of the other elements of this. Uh, but when I get a new client, I start inputting their information here. So I want to save things like the client name, the client website, their email, the list of their products and services, and their lead magnets. Because oftentimes on social media, I'm referring to this um, as like a home base for uh, what I'm producing for the clients. Next up, I have links to their social media channels. And I kind of have dummy text right here for now, uh, but I do populate this for each client, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but like their Facebook, their Twitter, their Instagram. Um, this also helps as you start building your social media business and start adding team members. Um, you have a home base for all of this information. Next up, we have our marketing messages. So we want to really clarify who we're talking to, what makes them different, the benefits of the products and services, and the pain points. And this is coming directly from my client intake form. So if you have a client intake form, you can have them fill out this information, but then you're saving it here for future reference as you're building out your social media strategy. Next up, we have different elements of our strategy. So things like post topics, what the Facebook strategy looks like, and when you're going to do reporting. I've also added in here some hashtag topics, though in a later video, I show you how I actually organize topics. I started off with it in this view, and you may find that this is enough for you. Uh, but I kind of go a lot deeper with a lot of my clients now. So I'll show you in a later video in this series how I do that. And then the last section here is the resources. So I've got things like the visual brand guide guide, um, the Canva templates, any client photos and videos, as well as a list of competitors. So I want to click on over to show you this in real time with one of my clients. So this is my client, Linda. And you can see here that I've got her information populated. We've got her name, her website, her contact information, a list of her products and services, and her lead magnet. So for instance, if I click on this and pull it open, it'll pull up lists of her lead magnets. We have lots of information here. And you can also see that I've tagged my team in this post as well. So if you also give your clients access to this, they'll also be able to help you populate information. You can see that I'm tagging different people and have a history of what's been updated here as well. Next up, I have links to the Facebooks, uh, Instagram, and LinkedIn pages. I've got her target audience. So if I click this open, for instance, you can see uh, a bit of information about this. This help guides our posts, um, products, uh, benefits, and pain points. Points. Um, and then also we have our post topics here. Um, we have different things like how we're going to work with this client. Um, we have uh, the Facebook and Instagram strategy, LinkedIn and reporting. And then also I tend to do Facebook ads either in a Google sheet, though I'm now switching it over to Airtable as well, um, in, a, in a spreadsheet. So I put that in there as well. And then, you know, the visual grant, brand, brand guide, <laughs> say that 10 times fast, the visual brand guide. I've got the 
Canva templates, our client photos, videos, transcripts, competitors. I even added in some more things like meeting notes and accounts to connect with here as well. So you can really make this whatever you'd like. Now, before I go, I will show you that there are different views um, within Airtable. And for this particular um, section of our client base, the different views aren't as important. But I do want to point them out because you do see them on the left hand side here of the video. We have the main view and the list view. The list view in this particular form is not as helpful, but it looks like your traditional spreadsheet. I use the main view here that I've titled that myself, <laughs> main view. Um, and it's almost like a Kanban style, or it is a Kanban style way to store data and information. Now, Airtable is like a super giant fancy spreadsheet, so you can do whatever you'd like with it. So there you have it. This is my client onboarding organizational method for social media managers. There you have it, a video on how to organize all of the various onboarding pieces that we get from clients. And I hope this really helps you streamline your entire process. Now make sure you stay tuned for part two of this series because I'm gonna show you how to use Airtable to plan out your client's content. We're talking content calendars and content themes, as well as the specific posts and the captions themselves. So make sure you subscribe and you hit that notification bell so you get more updates on what's to come. That's all for today. Bye for now.